Hey guys, how's it going? Dion here. Today I'm kind of excited because I'm doing a video that I've never really done before, and that's kind of an update video after one year with the iPhone XR and the iPhone XS. So this have been here, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about them, talk a little bit about how the XR is compared to the 11, and how the 10s is compared to the 11 Pro here, which are the new ones this year that are being replaced. And uh, yeah, here we have the blue 10R, space gray iPhone 10s, and uh, let's get to it here. So I did want to run some tests and show you guys some things. So oops, here we open some stuff up. I wanted to go into settings and show you guys kind of the first thing is the battery health, which uh, is very important because after one year of your selling it, odds are that someone's going to ask you what the battery health on your device is. You can see here that the battery health on the 10S is at 88% of the maximum capacity. That means whenever you charge it to full, it's now at 88% of what it was when you first bought it a year ago. So if I were to do a battery test comparing the 10S, the 10R, the 11 and 11 Pro, both of the, the 10S and the 10R would be at a disadvantage because they're not brand new like the 11 and 11 Pro are. With that said, here with the 10R, we are at 91% instead of the 88% with the 10S. That's probably just because the 10R has better battery life and that means less battery cycles, I'm assuming. I'm not a pro at this, but uh, that's what I'm guessing. But overall, you know, the 10R still does have much better battery life than the 10S, about like three hours or so more than the 10S. So it's still a really good phone. I think if you're looking into getting a 10S or a 10R this year, they're both really great. And it really, it's gonna come down to how good of a deal you're gonna get. So if let's say if you can get a 10R for like 500, so that's really good. However, if you can get a 10S for like only $100 or $150 more, then it is really nice to do that upgrade up to the 10S just because of the display, even though you do get worse battery life. So it depends really on what you need. Of course, that also means that you would have to settle for the colors. So if you really want something colorful and cool, then of course you're gonna have to go with the 10R or uh, you know just stick with the space gray, silver or gold colors from the 10S. Now comparing these devices to the 11 and the 11 Pro, of course on the 10R here, we only have one camera lens while on the 10S we have a normal and then a zoom camera. So we have a 2X zoom on there, which definitely is nice and it comes in handy. However, you're not really missing out on much between these two devices right here. The camera on the 10R is plenty good and it actually looks really clean compared to any of these other devices here because it only has one lens on the back, which is uh, nice and refreshing now that we have three on the back of the Pro here that I know a lot of people don't like the way that looks. Now here, of course, we have the 11 and this one is the one that is replacing the 10R. And as I had mentioned in a previous video, the 11 just feels substantially better than the 10R for some reason. You can see that Apple has moved the Apple logo right here to the center, kind of cleaned up the design a bit, make it match more with the two lenses that we have up here, kind of just clean up everything a bit. And it kind of looks better, I think, than the 10R. I still think the 10R looks really good, but for example, right here between these two colors, I do prefer the yellow. I do like the way the 11 here looks more than the 10R, but you can see them there. I do kind of wish we would have gotten a blue color with the iPhone 11, maybe a slightly different blue color, and uh, that would have been cool, but of course we got the purple one, which is really great. Now, of course, I would bring these up closer so that you guys can see there have been some tiny, tiny changes, but overall, it pretty much does keep the exact same form factor as the 10R. So if you have a 10R and are planning to upgrade to the 11, you're pretty much getting the exact same form factor. There's just kind of like a feeling to it that feels a little bit better and it's kind of hard to describe. And I do want to mention, I'm not going to get into speed tests or anything like that. I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about these devices, how they look and how they've changed and what has happened to them, mainly because I'm just not that type of person. I don't really care about those specs like that. If the device works, it works. So far, I've been using the 11, the 11 Pro, the 10R and the 10S these past couple of days. There is no like significant difference that I notice when using the devices day to day, zero at all. Between the 10R and the 11, no noticeable changes like that that I'd be like, whoa, that is much faster, nothing at all. Same thing with the 10S and the 11 Pro. It is worth noting that this 10R is prone to breaking and scratching more easily because it doesn't have as good glass as the 11 here. So that's something to keep in mind. Apple upgraded the glass on the 11. 
However, it's also worth noting that it's also still super easy to scratch it. As you can see here, maybe not, I did scratch the 11, which kind of sucks. So in one of the previous videos, I kind of stacked all the phones together and somehow the back lenses scratched the front of the other screens. Now you would think the screens would be able to handle that, but it looks like they weren't able to handle that and they scratched. So I don't know, maybe the glass isn't as good as Apple's saying, and maybe it still scratches just as easily. You can see here this hit that this uh, 10R took, which was pretty bad. And what's funny is you can see there that the aluminum was not affected. It like took it all just right there on the corner of a screen. And it was only about a three or four foot drop in a bathroom tile floor. So really not something that should have happened. This is a really unlucky hit, but you can see that it, it's kind of started to propagate through the screen and it's gotten worse over time. So these devices are definitely nice but uh, you do have to be careful with them. They're still very easy to break. And uh, yeah, worth noting that uh, they're not indestructible and the 10R did have a reputation of uh, not surviving drops very well. The 10S on the other hand, since it has that stainless steel border, it has a more kind of rigid construction and overall feel. It will help protect it a little bit, tiny, tiny bit more from drops and cracks like that. But at the end of the day, it's all similar. It really depends on how you drop it. And uh, hopefully you don't drop your device and don't break it because that always does suck. So yeah, if you're looking in between the 10S and the 10R, again, it really depends on the price you're able to get. If you get a good deal on a 10S, I say go for it over the 10R just because of that screen. If you don't care about the screen, then I think the battery life on the 10R, the nice colors that you can get for the 10R, and the fact that it ends up being even cheaper, so it's something that you have to worry about less, I think it ends up being a really good deal and uh, a heck of a good phone if you can get it for a really good price, especially if you get it much better than the price that the 11 costs, which is $700. So if you can get a 10R for like 430 around there, then that's really good and I highly do recommend that. Now as a quick comparison, because I totally forgot to show you guys the space gray on the 11 Pro. Here, of course, are last year's model and this year's model. And you can see that there, we now have three lenses, a much cleaner looking back. Is it as grippy? No. Do you feel like the back won't scratch as easily? No. With the 11 Pro, you do kind of feel like you're gonna get that back scratched. Don't know how resistant it's gonna be, but I definitely don't feel as safe with it when I don't have a case as I did with the 10s. I don't really miss my 10s, but it's worth noting that uh, you are gonna feel like you might scratch this because it just feels really nice but it doesn't feel quite as resistant as that glass back that we had with the, the 10S, the 11, and the 10R. And I think the main thing is that if you're deciding between any of these devices, just know that the 10R and the 10S are still really great devices. If you can save some money and uh, you really wanna upgrade and don't wanna wait till next year for the SE or uh, the iPhone 12, which is gonna get a significant upgrade, then definitely think about getting one of the older devices at these better prices. They're still plenty fast, they work really well, you're not missing out on many features. The best time to get devices is really when new devices come out and then you can get the older devices for better prices. Kind of the same thing applies to a lot of things out there, cars, vehicles, things like that. Whenever the new model comes out, it's now time to go get that old model you always wanted. The same thing with TVs, and the same idea should apply to devices and phones and all that as well. Because at the end of the day, it's really smart to save money, especially on things like these that uh, after a year, you know, they lose 50% or their value and stuff like that. So worth keeping that in mind. If you have any specific questions, feel free to comment down below. If you made it this far without skipping or anything, then thank you very much. Especially you, you really appreciate it, really supporting the channel. And uh, I will catch you guys in the next video.